All right, so we are here with Shannon from South County Basketeers, and she'll be giving us a tutorial on how to hand make um, face masks uh, for beginners. So we're really catering this to the people who have never done it before. Take it away, Shannon. Thank you. All right, so if you're looking to make a face mask and you're trying to do it with materials in your house, so you don't necessarily need to go out to be able to put one of these together, um, you just, you need a couple of small squares of fabric. So this can be new fabric if you have some at your house. It can be recycled fabric. You could use old bed sheets. Um, anything with a, with a tight weave cotton is what works best. Um, and you want to make sure you can cut two squares. So you want your squares to be, um, or your rectangles, I should say, to be about nine inches by about six to seven inches. Um, you're going to put your two pieces with the right sides of the fabric together. Um, as you can see, I've used different fabrics for the front and back of my mask, and that way, when I take my mask off, I can tell which side is the front and which side was the part that was against my face. Uh, you wanna try and av avoid touching the part that was facing out if you're wearing it out in public, because that also can be a source of cross-contamination. Mm. So when you put your two rectangles together, what you're gonna do is, on your sewing machine, using a really simple straight stitch, you're going to stitch around the two short sides of your fabric and the one, one of the long sides. So you're going to stitch almost like a little pouch. So just a straight, straight stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch around that really quickly here. So three straight lines. And we have our little pouch stitched. And that can just be done with a plain old needle and thread just straight it along? It can. Okay. It can. If you have a sewing machine, it'll be a little quicker. Yep. If you don't, you can absolutely stitch it by hand um, all the way around those three sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip my little pouch inside out. As you can see, it just makes like almost like a little tiny pillowcase. Um, and I'm just going to kind of press it flat don't need an iron you can kind of just use your hands and then you're gonna take the top of your little pouch and you're just gonna tuck it on the inside so when I'm sewing masks uh, before I sew my pouch I like to pin my elastic on in between the two layers of fabric so when I turn it my elastic is already attached if you don't quite have the sewing skills to to do that you can easily attach your elastic after you've sewed your mask piece so don't don't worry too much about that um, and then you're going to sew another straight line right across the folded edge of your fabric to close up the top of your pouch. So some of the hospitals um, ask that we leave a little, a little pocket on the pouches that we're sewing to donate so they can add their own filtration material. But if you're doing this for every day to wear out to the grocery store just to protect yourself, you don't necessarily need to leave an opening on the top. You can just go ahead and close the top of it up. As long as you're using the couple of layers of tight weave cotton, it's gonna have the same level of protection that it would if you did multiple layers. And it's gonna add a little more breathability. You wanna be able to breathe through your mask, which is why you wanna try to use 100% cotton if possible so that you can breathe through it. You don't wanna put plastic or anything inside of it because that's gonna defeat the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so then what you wanna do is you wanna make a couple of small pleats on each edge of your fabric. And how you're gonna do that is just by pinching a little part of your fabric and kind of folding it over onto itself. Okay. About, about a half an inch pinch. So you're essentially you're squishing about an, an inch of fabric into over it on itself. You're just doing a little fold. So I'm gonna pin my little fold and I'm gonna make a couple of them. I'm, either side of my mask. And they're going in the same direction too, I see. So for, for yeah, nice form it, fitting, yeah. If, it, if, it, if you do accidentally pleat them in opposite directions, it's, it's still gonna work in the mm -hmm. same way. Okay. Um, just for aesthetics, I like to do them in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew across both sides of your pleats. So this one I've already sewn. So you see I have two pleats on each side. So this is what the front of your mask looks like when you're finished. Mm -hmm. 
then what you need to do is you need to add some elastic or some ties to either side to hold it on. So you can use regular sewing elastic if you have it. If you don't, um, don't go to the store looking for it because they probably don't have any. Um, yeah. You can also use um, hair ties if you have regular elastic hair ties at home like these. You can cut them and you can sew either end of your hair tie onto the edge of your elastic of your mask. Um, if you don't have those, if you have any sort of um, thin, elastic, stretchy headbands, um, these work really great. They come from the dollar store. You cut one of these, we'll make one mask. Or even your hardware stores have eighth of an inch bungee cording that you can use. If you call them, if they do the curbside pickup, you can order a couple of feet of that to mm. use for your homemade masks. If you don't want to leave your house um, and you don't have any sort of elastic material around that you can use, the other thing that you can do is um, make your masks with ties. Um, so ties can be made out of um, bias tape if, you're, if you have some simple sewing supplies around. They can be made out of ribbon, um, cording, any sort of strips of material, um, you know, they sell something called twill tape that sometimes people will have in their homes. Any of that will work really good. So you just want to sew a length of it onto each corner of your mask. And then what you can do is you can use those ties to tie the mask behind your head. And it actually works really well because you can adjust the length so that it's comfortable for the wearer. Great. And who are you making the little kitty masks for? <laughs> These are actually going to, to Critter Hut in Wakefield, one of our essential businesses that's delivering um, kitty food, car side pickup for um, cat food and dog food for our local communities. Nice. So shout out to them. <laughs> that's great. And so for the fabric too, so if someone doesn't have that particular type of fabric that you're using, mm -hmm. and again, they don't feel comfortable going out to the store, um, is what can they use that they might find right around their house? So one thing that is really great is any sort of old bed sheets that you have. Um, mm -hmm. So most bed sheets are made of really tight weave, 100% cotton or a poly cotton blend. Um, those work fairly well as well. Um, and like I said, they're tight weave quality fabric, so they will um, block particles. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that laying around, um, the CDC is recommending even things like a handkerchief. Um, you know, I have fat quarters of fabric laying around these are really great to use you can actually cut a few of a few masks out of each fat quarter so if you are headed to the grocery store and you use walmart you can buy a fat quarter at walmart for about 99 cents mm -hmm. so it's really an uh, economical way to put together some masks mm -hmm. um and like i said they'll throw it right in with your grocery order um, or even I've heard some people are using old t-shirts. You can use um, t-shirts also to cut up. Um, if you cut t-shirt strips and stretch it, you can use those to sew ties. They're nice and soft and stretchy, so you can use those as your, um, your tie material as well. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the organization that you're volunteering with, the uh, South County Masketeers? Yes, yeah, so the South County Masketeers was a group that we formed in order to try to meet the, the mask needs of the community. Um, we've been making masks for the local hospitals and um, a lot of different home care programs with frontline caregivers, um, as well as some of our community essential businesses. So um, grocery stores, small businesses, and things like that where their workers are out on the front lines trying to get materials to our community members. Um, so we can use as many volunteer sewers as are willing to join our cause. We do have some donated materials that we are getting out to our community sewers um, via porch pickup to, um, to put together some masks. And then we have our volunteers dropping those back off so that we can donate them to some of our larger hospitals and healthcare organizations. So if you can sew at all, um, and are willing to help, please come join our group. We would love to have you. Um, and then if you're a business that's looking for some face masks, um, we ask that you send requests through our email address, southcountymasks at gmail.com, and we will do what we can to try to help you out. 
Um, at this time, we're serving um, the, the local kind of southern Rhode Island area. Um, there's a number of groups working in the northern part of the state and the lower half of Mass that we can refer those um, kind of businesses that are a little farther away to to connect you with them as well. Great. And um, it's hard not to notice the very cute little dresses you have back there. Can you tell us about those? <laughs> so my, uh, my business is Rhodey Rebel Sewing and Craft. So um, I'd love for any anyone watching this, go like my Facebook page, Rhodey Rebel Sewing and Crafts. Um, I do a number of different um, projects through that, including clothing for children. So Wonderful. We will check it out. Well, thank you so much for your time and your service, um, sewing masks, and uh, we appreciate the tutorial. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for helping us get the word out.